Hello, hello, it's Julie. Welcome to PD in your PJs. I'm so excited to be here with you tonight to talk about really easy activities you can try with your grades 6 through 12 students. I'm just honored you would take time out of your busy work week to join me to talk about Seesaw, and I have some really great ideas and tips for you, so I can't wait to connect with you um, in this webinar and at the end when we have time for questions. Like I said, my name is Julie. I was a high school ELA teacher for 18 years. I was using Seesaw every day those last few years with 11th and 12th graders. And I'm now on the teacher community team at Seesaw. I work with Angela, if you've ever heard her present in any of the other webinars. I'm on the community team with her. You can find me on Twitter at EdTechJulieJ, and I would love for you to give me a follow if you happen to have it open on a device. I share lots of resources and tips related to Seesaw. And of course, you can connect with our whole team on Twitter at Seesaw. Now, I do want to tell you that we're just talking about the first few activities that your students might want to do in Seesaw if you're just getting started. This particular training is not going to go over how to create a class or how to add students. So if you're in need of that kind of information, definitely take a look at our other PD list. You can find it at web.seesaw.me backslash PDS, or you'll get these slides here in a little bit. And when you get them, just open this one and click on that link there. You want to look for some webinars that have the phrase brand new in the title. So we have brand new part one and brand new part two and look for the ones for sixth through 12th grades. Um, these slides are coming to you along with the recording. So you'll get those in just a little bit. I'm going to pause really quickly and look in the question box just to make sure nobody's having any trouble connecting. Okay, it's looking good. You can um, type in any of your questions related to these activities in the question box and I will answer those as we um, get towards the end of our presentation tonight. Okay, so when we're talking about activities and the really robust activity library that Seesaw has for you, um, it's really a twofold purpose. One, we wanna make sure you have lots of ideas as far as what your students can be doing with Seesaw. So that's why there's thousands of activities that were created and submitted by teachers just like you. But beyond that, we want you to know that if you're using this activities flow in Seesaw, you're actually going to save a lot of time. You're going to be able to collect your student responses digitally all on one screen and you'll have to lug home fewer folders and binders and other papers to grade. Or even if you're used to collecting your students' work digitally, instead of having to click through 20 different links or files, in this case, you'll be able to see student responses all from one screen. And I can't wait to show you that in just a few minutes. So we think not only will this give you great ideas for how to get started with Seesaw in your classes, but it'll also save you some time in the long run and such an easy and quick way to see what your students know. So I'm going to show you a couple of screens grabs of that um, and even show you that in a live demo here in just a minute. So when you're in a Seesaw class, if you're just getting started and you have created a class, but maybe the class doesn't have any student posts yet, you might see a screen something like this. You'll see this blue button encouraging you to browse the activity library. Even as you're just getting started with Seesaw, you can click that blue button when you see it in Seesaw. And Seesaw is also going to give you a few suggestions that are just right for your student's age. So if your class is set at eighth grade or ninth grade, for example, Seesaw will give you some appropriate suggestions there and you can click on any of those to go right to those um, activities in the library. But I'm also gonna show you some other ways to get to the library as well. And the focus of this particular session is to talk to you about the getting started collections for your grade. And to be honest, as someone who is using Seesaw every day with older students, there are just some really wonderful activities waiting there for you, whether you teach sixth grade or 12th grade or any in between. And they're also sorted kind of nicely or organized kind of nicely by subject. So you can look for the subject that you're teaching and find something that's going to be just right for your students. Um, here's the thing I was talking about too, and I'll demo this for you live in a minute, but it's really handy that you're going to be able to see your students' responses to these activities all in one place. So this is just a screenshot, but what you can see here is that a teacher has shared this activity with students and then quickly just in one screen, the teacher can see all of these responses. If this is an activity that you think might interest you, you can click on the photo here later when you get the slides and it'll open that link for you. And here's something I was using Seesaw for every day, just kind of a ticket out the door, a quick formative assessment, an exit ticket, and your students can do that really quickly, like creating a note in Seesaw. And look how handy that is. You can see which students you're waiting on and you can see everybody's response all from one screen. So I, I'll show you that live in a second, but I just wanted you to see it on a screenshot because it's so exciting. 
point. Okay, I am gonna hop into the library live with you. I included this particular screenshot here just to remind myself to say to you that we have a lot of subjects represented in our library, not just what you would think of maybe as some of those core subjects like English and math, but we also have um, a lot of things for your specialists. So if you're a PE teacher, an art teacher, a music teacher, something like that in your school, we have things like that for you as well waiting in our library. So don't forget you can search for those subjects as well. Okay, I'm gonna pop out of my slide and go right into a Seesaw demo class. Now you can probably tell that we use this type of thing in a lot of our trainings and PDs, workshops, things like this. So this is a demo class. These are pretend students, but we've populated it with some samples of student work so that you can see what it looks like. You know that right now I'm in the journal view of Seesaw. Um, we're talking in this particular training about the activities tab and what it will be like to share activities with students. This is what it looks like when I see a list of all of the activities I've ever shared with students in this class, including the one you saw a screenshot of a minute ago, the exit ticket activity, or even sketch your goals, which I showed you on a slide a minute ago. So that's kind of what we're talking about is the activities. Now, I showed you the blue button that might be waiting for you when you first create your Seesaw class, but this green button, this green add button, is probably where you're always going to go to get to the library. You can do a lot of things from this green button, but today we're talking about the library, the activity library. So you're going to click that green button and go right to the library. And remember, my class that I'm demoing from right now is an eighth grade class. So I'm going to see that Seesaw is already taking me to activities that are just for eighth grade. But don't worry, you can always filter by grade so I can switch to another grade and I can filter by subject so I can take a look at all of the subjects available to me or I can even type in a keyword and type that right there and see what might come up um, that's related to that word or topic. So I have lots of different ways I can find activities. But I'm really excited to show you these getting started collections, okay? You wanna make sure that you're using the scroll bar as needed because like I said, we have some of those core subjects represented here. ELA, math, science, and history, and there's five activities in each of those collections. But the more you scroll, you'll also see we have some arts and music themed activities. And then we even have a collection that focuses just on using Seesaw with the Google tools that your students are already using. So you could use that in any subject. So hopefully you can find a collection that works for you, something that you're teaching. I'm gonna demo right now with ELA, but there are great activities in all of these subject areas. Okay, so when I click on that, this is the collection and just quick reminder, the collections at any grade level are represented by those colorful rectangles. These are collections, colorful rectangles. But again, we're in big kid grades here, so I'm gonna remind you what that looks like. You have the scrolling bar when you're in an older class. Okay, so I'm gonna demo from ELA and then my collection is going to have five activities. Now, the interesting thing about this is that in the getting started collections, which are designed for new users of Seesaw or students who are just getting started with Seesaw, all of these basically introduce one of Seesaw's creative tools at a time. Okay, so you're really just learning the basics of Seesaw as you complete these activities. So you can just see at a quick glance here that this one is focusing on a student learning how to take a picture in Seesaw. And remember, you can do that across any device or platform. So if your students are Chromebook users, that's fine. You can still take pictures on Chromebooks take a picture, label it. That's what they're learning in this particular activity. They can also record themselves in a short video as they respond to a question that you've given them. So they're using and learning the video tool here. Here's that note tool. We looked at it a minute ago with the exit ticket activity. So maybe they can just do a quick journal prompt answer or they could maybe do a quick formative assessment by typing a note. This is the drawing screen. So you can see they're kind of using that whiteboard. And here they're actually reading something that you, you as a teacher can share as a link. And there's a sample here for you that we've given you in this activity collection. Okay, so these are the five getting started activities, but I know what you wanna see is how you would actually get those to your students. So we know that we can browse the library by grade or subject or keyword, but once I found an activity, maybe even one of these from the getting started collection, how would I get it to my students? Well, I'm gonna tell you the key here is anytime you find something that you wanna use with students, you wanna go ahead and give it a like. You can see I'm kind of toggling my mouse around it so you can see that it's turning pink and white. You want to like that activity so that it gives you some more options. So I'm gonna like it, give it a pink heart, and now I actually have some options available to me to either organize it in a collection 
or to kind of customize it for my own students by editing it slightly. And I have those options available to me now that I have given it a heart. But I can just share it right away with my students without doing any of those other things. So I'm gonna do it from that big green button. Before I model that for you, I'm gonna show you a couple other features that you can see here on my screen. These are teacher notes that explain the activity. If you are new to Seesaw and just getting started, please read these notes because we're giving you some information information and context about what your students will be learning by doing that activity. You can also see that these little seesaw icons appear in my instructions here and you might be wondering how did they get there. I'll tell you that they're from these icon shortcuts and I can share a link with that a link with you about how to get to this shortcut page. I can put that in the slides for you too. Um, you don't have to memorize these or anything. These, this is just kind of fun for you to add these images to your instructions. It's really important for emerging and pre-readers. So teachers who teach younger grades are really excited about using these icons. It might be less important for those of us who are teaching older students, but it still does make them look pretty cool. And that's how you get those icons. So I'll make sure to share a link. And then what I was saying is that you want to click this share button to get it to your students. Now, if you're teaching big kids, you might have a different class every hour, like a first hour ELA, second hour. And so you might have a long list of classes. I know I did when I was in the classroom. I have a lot of demo classes right now. I'm only going to select one for now, but I could select two at a time if I wanted. If I was teaching first hour ninth grade English and second hour ninth grade English, I could select them both, um, you know, to get the activity to both of them. Them. This is how I'm getting it to my students. You can also see that I have the option here to share this activity with grown-ups. If I want to share it with somebody else in my school, I can share it on social media, share the link. You'll even, if you're using free Seesaw, see a tab here that says email to teachers. So you can click this to get it to other teachers over email. Super handy. I'm going to share it with my class now. And then Seesaw is going to remind me that my students just need to sign in and respond. And if I want to see if that activity made it to my demo class, I can go right there and you can see if you're watching me in real time, this is exactly the date and time that we're at right now. So you can see that I shared it to my students. Of course, I don't have any responses because um, this nobody's in this class live with me, but you can see that I shared it with my students and it's right there waiting for them. So this is my journal view, like my feed of anything students have added to CESA. So nothing from that activity is in the journal yet because they haven't submitted any responses. But once they would do that and I would approve it, then it would go permanently in their journal. Okay, so what's nice as a teacher is from the activity tab, you can always click this gray bar to see how many responses you have, how many you're waiting for. And it's this screen where you um, end up seeing all the responses in one place like we've talked about a few times tonight. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my slides and then I'll take a few minutes to answer questions if you have any. <coughs> Excuse me, remember the best place to reach out for help if you're stuck with activities or anything else as you're getting started with CESA is our help center. It's help.cesa.me. You have three different places you can get help. You can ask a question here, you can type something in the search bar, or you can even interact with our CESA assistant. So several different ways you can get help from the Help Center. As we conclude tonight, I just want to give you a reminder, too, that a survey is going to pop up on your screen as I um, conclude or after I conclude and push the button to stop the webinar. Please take just 30 seconds or a minute to give me some feedback and answer the questions. We use that feedback to help make our sessions better. So I appreciate your time and any honest feedback you can give me about our presentation tonight. Of course, if you can interact with us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, we do have grade level specific Facebook groups. So I really recommend you getting into the middle school or high school one depending on your grade level. It's a great place to connect with other teachers using CESA. And then of course you know about PD because you're in PD right now but don't forget to keep checking that. We're going to be updating our schedule soon for September and then you can watch any of our recordings that are still on YouTube. I'm excited to get in the question box and see what you might have waiting for me. I think what I'm going to do is stop the recording tonight but then stay online for a couple more minutes. So start typing in those questions and I'm super happy to help Thanks so much for joining me tonight. I hope to see you again at PD um, really soon. Bye-bye.